we're back looking at iMac number one. This one originally was diagnosed as having a problem with the flash storage that makes up the fusion drive. It is soldered onto the logic board, so it would basically deem a new logic board altogether if you wanted to fix that issue. But the workaround for this, or at least the hoped workaround, is we're going to chuck an SSD in and just have it boot off of that. Now I've managed to get hold of a one terabyte SSD. I went for a WD Blue as they were pretty good prices, pretty good reviews on these. The Samsung Evos are probably a little bit better, but for this machine it should do the trick. I have also bought the little wheel that we need to remove the screen as these are adhesived on. I'll be using this to remove the screen. I've then bought a 3.5 to 2.5 caddy so we can install the SSD. This will just stop it from rocking around in there. Some people basically just double sided tape them to the back of the device and but as we're going to be removing the old drive as well we're just going to shove it in and get it all screwed in like it should be. The only other thing that I've had to purchase is an OWC sensor. Because we're putting in the SSD it doesn't have the correct thermal sensor to detect the drive heat so the fans just run on at full blast. That were around £40 so it weren't the cheapest but you do need these in order to upgrade it. So. What we're going to do is we're going to start by trying to remove the screen with this wheel. Now I have done this before, but it was quite a while ago. So I believe we just work around very gently, take us time and we should be able to get in there. I mean, this is quite scary because, you know, the screen on these, the 5K, it's going to be the most expensive bit if it gets broken. What I'm going to try to do is keep it lent back as long as possible. And then once I'm happy with it being detached, I'm going to swap it round into the position where it's sort of laid on its back. And then that way that eliminates it from falling out altogether. I could probably just do it all while it's laid on its back. But I'm going to have a quick go with the wheel around the edges. And if I feel a little bit unconfident, then I'll uh, drop on its back. So, yeah, let's start with removing the screen. So I'm going to start initially with a little wheel and work my way around. Now, as I understand, we're pretty much okay all the way around. It's just here where the camera is that you've just got to be a little bit more careful. So let's get on a corner let's make a start quite yet as you'll notice there's a couple of cables here at the top you can see them on the video I'm just going to move it down so you can see a little better so what we're going to do is we're going to first undo this one on the right which just literally pulls up and out like that and then the one in the middle I believe has got a little tab that's it so it has a little black tab that you lift up and then that pulls a little metal bar up and that allows you to lift that off there. So looking at that, just pop that down the back there. You could probably see a lot better now to be fair. I should have done that in the first place. Just to clarify, that one there came from there. This one here, it's got a little tab on it. So the little black tab there, I pulled that round and that allowed me to pull it straight up. So at this point I decided to drop the iMac down onto its back because it was a little bit scary and I didn't want the screen to fall out. So what we need to do is basically try and break some of this adhesive down at the bottom here so that we can remove the screen. It does look to me as if this screen may have possibly been off before. Hopefully you should be able to see that okay on the video. But there's like a little adhesive tab here. Now the last thing that you want to do is damage any of the bottom of this screen as well. Pretty much buggered if that happens. I'm going to take my very specialized tool of a nectar card and I'm just going to gently go along the bottom of this. Any, any card will do also, it doesn't have to be a nectar card. I'm going to go along the bottom of this and I'm just going to try and knock some of the adhesive off. So after a bit of persistence I did eventually get the screen off. Um, I used the combination of that nectar card. I did use a Stanley blade at one point, which probably wasn't the best idea as there were risk of damaging the screen, but I didn't. It just broke a bit of the adhesive. I wouldn't recommend using the Stanley blade. The actual best tool that I ended up using, which surprise, surprise, was the little disc that I used for taking the rest of the adhesive off. That worked pretty well. 
and I slowly managed to remove the screen away from the iMac. Okay, so now the horrible task of removing the screens out of the way, we need to remove the hard drive. We're going to start off by disconnecting the SATA and power cable at the top. These should just pull off like that. And now we need to remove these two screws so we can get to the other screws and remove the hard drive. This should now move out of the way slightly like that, which allows us to then get to these. Just turn around. There is a bolt there. And then there's one at the back over there. Bracket here should lift away. There you have it. That's the hard drive removed. Now one thing that is fairly interesting about this is this is a late 2015 iMac. And looking on here, the date of manufacture was the 16th of March 2017. So I wonder if this has been an issue and this drive has been replaced. Which leads me to think even more that there is a problem with the flash storage on the logic board. So what we're going to do next is we're going to transfer these little nubbins out of there and we're going to put them onto the SSD carry. So let's start with that. So I'm going to start by removing these four little screws that are around the side of the drive. Okay, so we've got our SSD now. WD blue, so one terabyte. We're going to grab the caddy and basically the gap at the top there, I would imagine that is where the connector is going to need to go. We need to affix that like that there, as I'd imagine it would sit in the iMac this way, like that, with the little rubber, well, with it that way, basically, rather than having it affixed to that side. I mean, I don't think it particularly matters, but I'm going to go down the line of putting it in that way anyway. I've got four little screws, which came with the caddy to mount this in there. So that's now screwed into there. The next thing that we need to do is put in the little standoffs that we've just taken out of that drive. Now, if I line the two up together, you can see it's got three holes, but we're gonna put them in that hole there, not one there. Okay, so I had to film that bit off camera as, well, it didn't go really to plan. Basically, I couldn't get those screws into there. They were like, the, the caddies, the holes for the screws were a lot smaller than what they needed to be. So what I ended up having to do, which was a bit of a, Fast, but it did the trick was I got a little screw I drove that through because it was slightly some bigger and it made the hole slightly bigger then I put a slightly bigger screw and screwed that through and then that made the hole bigger and it allowed me to plug it in so yeah that's how I did that what we're gonna do next is we're gonna pop this into the iMac okay so I'm gonna grab the SSD now nice and sturdy that's not going anywhere so now what we need to do is we need to connect up the other USB device which basically as I say it has its little thermal thing here which detects the temperature of the drive or tricks it into thinking that it's not overheating or something along them lines now I believe that the side with the wiring goes to the original connector here and then that one there goes into the new SSD so that's the way that we're going to do it that into there and then with this one here pop that into there like so now what a lot of people do is they will twist it around there and just stick it onto there I personally am not a massive fan of this I think it's better 
see if you can get it somewhere like there. So I'm just going to grab some double sided tape and stick it to the back. I mean it's not going to go anywhere but it's just nice to keep it stuck down as the screen obviously it's just going to sit against the back of that. It doesn't vibrate or move or anything so it's not going to hurt anything. Get this stuck down there. Okay, so that's stuck down there now, that's not going anywhere. So what we need to do is this has a little peel off thing on the back, a little sticker. I'm just going to peel that off. There we go. And then I'm just going to, in fact, I think I'm going to feed these wires through here, like that. And then I'm just going to stick that straight onto the middle of the SSD, like that. That's installed. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to place the display back on the iMac and I'm going to power it on, make sure it can see the SSD. I also forgot to mention that we need to do these last two screws back up. So just push it all the way down to the bottom or remove one of the screws so you can see the original holes. Once they're lined up, just pop the two screws back in. Okay, so what I've done is I've basically just stuck some tape around the edge of this screen just to hold it there temporarily while we do his testing. As the last thing that I wanted for this thing to fall off and obviously it's not properly adhesive done. This is the first boot. I'm a little bit worried, but we'll see. I have got a memory stick here, which has got Catalina on it, which I'm hopefully going to be installing. So I'll just pop that in. Now this hard drive that I've put in there, I've not put any data on it. It's literally fresh out of the box. So with it booting into something, hopefully it's going to be booting onto the memory stick, which I believe is a Catalina install like so, but we'll see. I have just realized that it is most likely that the OS is installed on the SSD flash storage. So let's uh, try that again. Another very key thing that I've noticed is my keyboard wasn't plugged in. So that, that's, you know. Cool. Right, okay, that is the correct one, as you can see there. Got the ESD-ISO. Now the exciting bit is going to be when we boot into the recovery and we can actually see the SSD. Okay, so now we're in dish utility, you can see the new drive. It's a good sign, very good sign. You can also see the old drive which had the the flash storage had the old OS on it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to format this and then we're going to install Catalina. Just for a quickly show you while it's installing my official Apple device which I use for holding this up as they sell their fancy bit of foam that's about 60 quid. We have a half burnt passion fruit scented jar candle which does the job just perfectly. We're back on the desktop now, everything's gone okay, which is a good sign. We've, um, I'll just unplug the USB just to get that out of dish utility. But if you look at dish utility, you can see we've got Untitled, which is the built-in flash storage. We've then got Macintosh HD, which is our volume which the OS is installed on, which is the one terabyte SSD. So that seems to be working all good, which is a good sign. So... I believe that because that's there, it's not been used because the OS isn't running on it, we should be fine now. But I'm going to do a bit more testing in regards to actually doing it a bit of a stress test like we did last time. But when I do sell this iMac on, I'm going to advise the person to just not use that as obviously there is some kind of an issue with it. And hopefully, because the OS is not on there, it no longer needs to look at it, no longer needs to access it. I mean, we could have got away with just installing the OS on the Macintosh HD the mechanical one which I've removed the Seagate but realistically you want an SSD in it. It's a high-end iMac, still got a really good spec for its age. Yeah, I'll keep testing it over the next couple of days and then once I'm happy with it, we'll get the screen stuck back on. So it's two days later, the Mac's been running various tests, I've been stressing the hard drive out, I've been trying to stress the graphics out, I've been trying to stress everything out to see if I can get it to kernel panic again. And luckily enough, I can't get it to kernel panic, so to me, I'm calling that fixed. So it looks like it was a problem with the flash storage that's on the logic board. The next job that we're going to do is I'm going to seal the screen back properly. So to do so, you use some little adhesive strips. 
got a little packet there so as you'll see they've all got different numbers and I've got a little guide here which came with the OWC sensor which basically tells me exactly where to put the adhesive strips back again but the first job is to remove this and clean off all the old adhesive as it won't stick to it. I'm going to remove the screen and we'll start doing that. So just like before I removed the screen and once I got it lent forward I disconnected the two cables I then started removing the adhesive from around the edge of the screen. Now ideally you want to get as much of this off as possible it can be quite tricky sometimes. This one in particular I'm fairly confident I've been off before which made it more difficult as usually you can just pull the little tabs and it'll just pull the whole line off but these kept snapping and I ended up having to use a little tool and such as but if you take your time you should be able to get it all off properly. You may also notice that my little double sided tape fix failed but it can just stay like that. Now all that old adhesive's off, I'm going to try and put the new adhesive on. On the little guide that I've got here, it says to start with number 11, which is that one there in the top left hand corner, and then work his way around and stick it on the back of the LCD. So I've cleaned it down, like I said, the best that I can. There are a few little bits left, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So we're going to start with number 11. So looking on the back of the little guy here, number 15 and number 14, which I've got here, they go on the bottom of here, of the actual screen itself, the LCD. Okay, so now we've got all of the adhesive strips applied to the iMac, we're just going to pull them off one by one. Not forgetting to remove the two on the back of the screen neither, on the actual LCD assembly. And then once we've pulled those off, what I did was I lined up the bottom of the screen with the iMac first, so it was glass on, so to the bottom of the frame contact is really you only get one shot to get this right, so if it's slightly off centre and you have to pull it off, it's going to make the adhesive weak and that kind of stuff, so you want to avoid that. Of course, before you lean it back, don't forget to plug back in the two cables behind that, and then once you're happy with it, just set it back into the iMac. You can have a little feel around and you should be able to see that it lines up perfectly. I applied some tape just for extra security, just while it sort of sat there for a bit. Okay, so it's um, a couple of days later air again the iMac has been left with the tape on I don't need, think it's actually necessary to have the tape on once you do it because it, it should adhesive straight away you should or adhere straight away it shouldn't need any tape to help it but I just like taking a precaution um everything's been fine on the iMac I left it testing again since I glued it all back together it's not crashed it's not kernel up it's not done anything so I think we're okay looking around the iMac since I've stuck it back on um everything seems to line up nicely there's a bit of old glue residue which I'll clean off a bit later but it's nothing major but if you look at the top of the iMac it's all banged straight there's no gaps there's no lines or anything like that so I'm very happy with that this is the end of the video anyway I hope you've enjoyed it I hope it's, you've learned something I hope it's helped you please leave a like below comment subscribe to my channel as I'm a new youtuber and thanks so